Greetings in the name of the Most High, our Savior, Yeshua, the one true Lord, creator of heaven and earth, a mystery to all, hated by, openly and publicly, by the governments and peoples of the world. Don't you find it strange that uh, laws may go into effect to protect murdering Muslims who happily murder uh, ambassadors and diplomats and any American they could get their hand on only to be apologized for by the administration. I don't know that I don't know that there's a decent person. Well, that must mean that uh, all the press and all the people who back Obama are indecent and disgusting and vulgar and, and barbaric and uh, murderous, lying and um, human disease. And by that I don't mean liberals, I mean, you know, obviously people who cynically back chaos by commanding that, you know, I, I look, there's a lot of Christians who feel like they're really serving Jesus because they came out of the, the whore of Babylon church. See, before you, before you congratulate yourself about not going to church, not going to a building where they worship and praise Jesus and, and, and listen to uh, sermons and, um, and give money, but before you congratulate yourselves on that, uh, before you get to the point of um, thinking, boy, you're really serving God now, think about this, the glee in your heart that hopefully these diplomats and ambassadors being killed might lead to complete total destruction, which will teach them, won't it? And if that's in your heart, it's well-deserved, Yahweh. I stand as a witness cheering you on. And if that's in your heart, you're a murdering, lying bastard. If that's in your heart, you're not in Christ. If that's in your heart, you are not saved, but filled with hatred, with your old heart and your old mind of eye for an eye and vengeance not filled with the Holy Spirit, not holy, and not on the good side, but will be lined up in the sights to be destroyed along with the rest. That's the word. I'm sorry, but, you know, it's too easy to get into an us and them mentality. You know, if that's you, you are slated and marked for extinction. The more you cry, come on, bring it on, it's about time these bastards got punished, the more you're going down with them. And on that day you'll scream and cry and say you don't deserve it. How dare you kill my children? How dare you kill me? How dare you reject me in the midst of that and throw me in with them? when I stood with you the whole time, did you? Did I? I can say I haven't. I mean, let me be honest with you. I have wished for them all to be wiped out once and for all. I have wanted to see World War III, only for no other reason, just to see them get theirs, damn it. I've done everything that I just accused you of, and probably much more imaginatively than you have. But I recognize that that is wrong thinking. I recognize that is a base, reactionary, uh, unspiritual, and almost... It basically cancels everything we've been talking about for years here. It's devoid of love. 
Now, on the other end of the spectrum, the churches that refuse to talk about politics when they're murdering babies right in front, they might as well just take them to the altar of the church, cut the baby's throat, and have everyone uh, drink and eat the uh, flesh. They might as well, because that's how God sees them. So they're no better. Obviously, they're just high satanic priests posing as pastors. And that's basically it from coast to coast. And I don't care who you are, if you have a, a state-affiliated church, you are damned. And you've damned your congregation because you refuse to tell them the truth, that there are no oaths to Satan. In, all that means is that Satan is your master. And uh, I've seen all the big churches, and that's the case in every one. There is no exception. What do you want me to do about it? I'm not going to church. I would rather go to a Hindu festival. No, because I'm not going to be taking it seriously, you know. I mean, <laughs> um, well, a Hindu festival, uh, when I'm saying Hindu, what I mean is, what is it? Hare Krishna, yeah. With the Sunday vegetarian meal, that's what I'm uh, chanting around. And yeah, I mean, I uh, I dig the whole Eastern thing, you know. I mean, it was a breath of fresh air, a little tea, Chinese food, and Buddha. Getting into the right karmic vibe. Trying to not, like, ahimsa, not do harm to anyone. You know, there's all these great concepts, and then you take a look at India and China and uh, Japan, where <laughs> you just, you're going, okay, on the word, verge of their own World War Three. Okay. In other words, yeah, those religions really made a big difference. And uh, go going off to the ashram just makes you a slave to who? The guru and his agents, who are no different than the pastors and their agents and the churches. In other words, the ashram's corrupt, the church is corrupt, the temple is corrupt. Do I make my point? Please, Christians, don't be so egocentric to think you're the center of the problem. You know, most people on earth know about God. They may not have the religious framework you have, but that doesn't mean they don't have reverence to God in, in every culture, everywhere on earth. They do. And the hypocrites are usually on display publicly on, uh, in, you know, in, in, in their, uh, when the church bells ring. And that makes me, well, and before you say that, remember, the church of atheism and rejection, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, is another hardcore church with hardcore conformianity and churchianity rituals the same as in the churches, as you find on Hollywood Boulevard. In fact, structurally, there is no difference between church and rejection of uh, God and, and the uh, um, projection of man on drugs. In other words, the man, the drug, the, the, the flesh man, gratification of the flesh. Well, this is like a younger thing usually, but gratification of the flesh at all costs, worship of all uh, nasty things because they're rebellious when they've been institutionalized in the church of perversion from day one. ha, 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 ha just when you thought you were going to get away with something here. Just when you thought you were going to get away with something here, all the doors shut on you. All the windows shut on you. All the avenues of escape shut on you. Lest you want to join... the hypocrites and put on that holiness. And, you know, it's probably worst in the East. Worse, I'm sorry, not worst. Worse in the East in the sense of, you know, ecstatic ritual, you know, where people are really devout and they're really throwing themselves into it and they're really getting into, into ecstatic dancing or or whatever, you know, to, uh, to really, and, and asceticism and, 
and uh, just on the edge to really celebrate the overcoming of death and to celebrate uh, that, you know, they, they uh, are so spiritual. And, 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 you know, you have to go back to mankind. Man is a spiritual being. He will always create a sacred center. Uh, he will always delineate sacred spaces as oppo opposed to profane space in his house. For example, the fireplace is the sacred space, the, the hearth. And everything around that is more profane. But I mean, there's a center to every house. There's a center to every building. There's even a center to the Denver airport. There's a center to everything. And that's sacred space. Man is homo religiosus, as they used to say in my history of religion class. He is a religious being. He will, if there is no religion, he will invent one. If there is no sacred space in, in the woods there, he will create a grove area where sacred uh, rituals will continue. He's a homo ritualistic as well. No, is he a homo? No, I didn't. I'm not saying that. I'm saying homo meaning man. And um, no, I don't even have time to joke. I don't, I'm too, you know what? I'm too old to joke like that. I don't care. God. I've had to put up with being in America and put up with this, the torture I've gone through, Lord, having to watch the news, I mean, I, I can't, and, and politics and, and uh, dirty, dirty and disgusting people. And I, and, and to watch lie after lying, murders and having no one go to prison and because everyone's part of the same secret. I could see it now. I couldn't see it 10 years ago. But I see how none of these guys go to jail because law enforcement and them and everybody else are part of the same coven. You know what I mean? It's like the, the whole Mason Brotherhood thing. If you go to court, you're the judge and a fellow Mason comes in and he's, he could be guilty as all as sin. And you know, you, uh, if you can throw the case out, you do. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing, but on you know, much bigger and more profound that they enter into in the whole world. And that includes Romney's despicable uh, Mormon church you know, absolutely um, horrible. What a horrible blasphemy that is. You know, and you can't totally trust a guy who's going to just embrace delusion anyway. I'm happy for the ethics. I'm happy for the charity. Happy that, you know, he helps his fellow man and gives time to people that and, and became a pastor to help people. And I'm happy for all you pastors that go and help people and give charity and, uh, and, and, and give of yourselves. And, you know, that's, a, that's good. I'm simply here prophesying to you the truth of your condition and situation that you must change, even though I know, I know you won't. But, you know, fair warning, you may be very good people and you're all connected to the world to prove that being connected isn't such a bad thing. Groovy. So I came here to this planet to just tell you, um, before you go celebrating how great it is to have a friend in Jesus, that maybe you ought to try being a friend of Jesus for once. You know what I'm saying? And then be saved. The question becomes, would God condemn all these charity, these wonderful people? And if so, then we hate him, and that's not our God. We'll invent another one. Hence, you have Mormonism, you know, and other religions of man, you know, uh, Mormonism, uh, what's the other one? Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you know, cults, cults of personality like Barack Obama is a church. He's the pastor of his own cult of personality. Man is religious, and he will make a religion where none exists. He will not simply remain profane and all these religions are going to fight against each other because no other religion can tolerate while the truth which is what I've told you and that and, and others have told you who stand outside of the system who refuse to you know who are not here on earth to participate in your games which sorry your religions to us are games so we don't participate in the game of charades You know, and as a result, all we get is the wrath of people in the church system 
and in the religious systems of the world and the government systems because we confront politicians the same way. So, um, you know, before you go off celebrating, just remember the Franklin cover-up for the Republicans <laughs> before you go calling the Democrats totally evil. So, you know what I mean? There just is no, there is no panacea here. And of course, covering up pedophilia is the biggest job of the world and law enforcement that there is. Ensuring that, you know, abortion, human trafficking, prostitution, slavery is alive and well on planet Earth. Um, which will never be prosecuted ever and you'll never see in the news because everyone's got something on everybody. So no one can actually be free and say what they think. Nobody. Unless, you know, you, I, I, I claim to have protection of the Lord Yahweh. God, Jesus. I claim to have a covering and unction to say what I have to say. Well, it's always been the same way with me since I was three. I've always just blurted out the thing that was inconvenient. So what is the answer, Brother Z? Well, there is no answer. You know, in other words, the answer goes to the... I'll tell you the answer then. I'm just being, um, being too literal here. The answer goes to the individual. That individual, I don't care if he's in church, a mosque, or nowhere, or an atheist, or this or that or the other thing. It's his relationship, the individual, or her relationship with the living God who is everywhere, who is present, and everyone knows he, he exists because... And the biggest, the people who have the most faith of all are atheists. We've established that as a truth, as an axiom of truth. Well, because the more you deny him, the more you believe in him. And they're fervent, as you can see, that they love their religion. It's sacred to them. Just like abortion rights are sacred to Democrats. That, that's just that, and I guess now the gay, gay rights. What are some of the other ones? Free speech except for um, uh, Christians, conservatives, constitutionalists, you know that. Free speech for all except this group is what they're for. In other words, with the Muslim thing, they think they can muzzle the uh, conservatives uh, with new laws saying you can't say anything but, the, you know, but Jesus and urine and Mary with uh, elephant dung, that's fine and our taxpayer dollars will pay for that and that's going to be on display in New York uh, right now. Jesus in urine, a, a piece of a piece of crap, you know, it's just junk that that they call art, and the the left owns that, and that's that's their. I told you, if a Satanist could, they take trees and have the roots stick up in the air and have it grow underground and adorn the roots. That's the way they are, and so if they can have Jesus in urine, to them that's mana from heaven. You know, they should have it so they can drink the urine, because that would be champagne to them. And there's no, and you know, and abortion and whatever, and probably ultimately just hacking bodies to death and cannibalizing them is what they'd really like to do. But since they have to wait for the legal precedent for that, I'm being, I'm making a joke. But that's where it leads. They're the more satanic than the uh, than the conservatives, but the conservatives are also um, nodding and waking part of the same secret society. So there is no difference between them, really. Ultimately, legally, there's no difference between them. You know, it's not, not only is it not your government, but it never really was. And there, there's no government that can save anybody. The forces of um, this world that control the United States and that control the, all the governments of the world are owned by Satan. And so there is no panacea or, you know, the, America really got a break, I think, in protection from, from, you know, just being vastly satanic, which is called total. The ultimate Satanism would be totalitarianism. So there was a respite from that because of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and, and people sacrificed everything to have freedom, to have a place to call their own, to have a place where they could worship the Lord. And, and the Lord was, you know, I mean, prayer was the main thing these guys were doing when they were fashioning Constitution, Declaration of Independence, fighting off the enemy, and so forth and so on. Um, but it seems like what people have done is allowed the um, bad people who now run everything, 
who shouldn't be there, but there should be, in, in my view, in prison, um, uh, you know, away from anything that they could touch that could possibly have anything to do with governance or anything like that. I mean, you know, or any kind of a right for voting, even. I mean, that's how hardcore I am. I don't think they should have a voice in any way whatsoever in this society. However, they're running things. And they have eradicated God from, I mean, even though it's uh, Christmas is a national holiday, what do you think of this? It's illegal for you to celebrate it. In other words, it's legal, but you cannot celebrate it. In other words, if you were to go to put a manger um, in, in your front yard or something, they would legitimately have it taken away under the color of law, even though it is a national holiday, which is a disgrace which is disgusting, which makes these people despicable. Every other religion is allowed to celebrate, but not Jesus, which gives you the clue. What's, what is it about Jesus that they so object to? Because they know Jesus, not the others, is the real way. And they want to lock that way off, that way of waking up, that way of understanding, that way of salvation, so that people cannot be free. And along with that goes water rights. Well, let's go down the list. With Jesus goes the rights to everything else, to water, food that's not tainted, and all those things, to be free of disease. No, now we're all, we all have diseases that they have created. And if you try to get clean, they will try to lock the door off so you can't get clean, you can't get away from the GMO. They'll probably try to outlaw organic foods before long. These could not, you cannot look at this in any other way or you'll go crazy, except to understand these are the principalities of wickedness in high places that control these idiots who are at the top. And only idiots are at the top. Mark my words. Somehow the good people never get into office or never get into positions of power. You know, there's the exception every once in a while, you know, a good man, a good woman, but usually it's not the case. Systemically, it's not the case. And it never will be the case. And have you ever stopped, just, just for a minute, stop to ask yourself, why during my entire lifetime has it been like this? And then I understand from the previous generation, it was the same way then, all the way back to the beginning. And then when you look at Moses, uh, you know, in the desert, he had the same thing with the people that wanted to worship the golden calf. And eventually, what would they do? They would try to, make it a law that everybody worship the golden calf or you'd be put to death. I mean, that's, you know, there's wheat and tares. There's two kinds of people. There are those who are God-loving and God-fearing and called of God, even though you and I are rebellious and we're not living up to our commitment as we should. We know that, right? That's the first step is knowing that. I have relied, I mean, my testimony is I've relied on God for everything since I was a baby because they've been trying to kill me ever since then, it seems. And, um, you know, it seems like I've had his, no matter what a bastard I am, no matter how selfish I've been, no matter how stupid I've been, no matter how foolish I've been, no matter how narcissistic I've been, no matter how all these bad things I've been, he's still there protecting me and I, and I feel guilty because I feel like I don't deserve it. At the same time, I need it or I wouldn't be here. I suspect you might feel a little bit the same way. You know, certainly the enemy has known of uh, my love for the Lord and my dedication to him and to his word. That is putting out the truth about the whole situation, letting it just blather out not being as uh, eloquent as the, they are at their pulpits because the pulpits now disgust me. They disgust me. If I see a pulpit, I actually throw up. If I see a pulpit with a cross on it, I, almost, I throw up. I get sick to my stomach. If I hear someone singing Amazing Grace, I throw up. <laughs> that doesn't sound, that sounds like a demon. No, no, it's no demon. I, 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 unfortunately, and you too, people like us are just psychic. I, you know, I mean, I hate to put it that way, but we're, we're clairvoyant. 
We're empathic, unfortunately. I don't mean empathetic and ethically empathetic. I mean, you know, in other words, someone is completely uh, demon possessed and messed up and it, 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 you feel it, you know, and you, suddenly you can't function. And they don't mean anything toward you. They're just walking along. Well, most people are <laughs> demonically possessed. You know, the, the highest concentration that I've seen is, has been in the uh, Santa Fe Whole Foods market, um, which is usually packed with Subarus, usually with Obama stickers. But I guess this year they've all peeled their stickers off. But yeah, that's that's um, and then and then beyond that would be a Hollywood uh, party. Hollywood and Hollywood parties, the, 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 you know, or anywhere in Santa Fe where there's an arts party going on. The arts, ironically, um, given by Yahweh to the people and, and now taken by people who don't create good art and who think that, you know, peeing on Jesus is good art. And it's just, it's really unbelievable, you know, and there's no, the, the, there was a, um, a move to get rid of skills for a long time, you know, the skill of being able to paint a, a landscape or to, uh, you know, it's how, how destructive can you be with that skill to where, the people who have no skill that can they, they can just basically draw lines like a child. These people are now being enshrined in museums. And people say, well, you know, you didn't like Disneyland. No, I, I didn't. I, I was sick to my stomach the whole time I was there. And when I, you're, literally when we ran for the gates, we ran for the gates to get out of there. I was the worst experience I've had, I, I think, just about ever. And my, you know, it's not just me, my daughter, 21 years old, she felt the same way. She, she couldn't stand it. And I know what it was. It was just the, 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 the it's just like going to, um, you know, a mausoleum of dead people who are putting on this, you know, this kind of charade of being something worthy of anyone's attention and watching all these people go ooh and ah over nothing, over a facade. And it's really, it's incredible. It's incredible to watch, you know, but I mean, they do the same thing at the Academy Awards. They do the same thing at, you know, the Hollywood party. They do the same thing at political rallies and parties in Washington, D.C. They do the same thing. And, and uh, those would be worse places than obviously Whole Foods Market. Um, but I mean, that's if you want to get a good concentration Saturday evening, about mm, six o'clock, six thirty, just where, where they're running out to the then you can be in there and you can feel it. And um, basically the, the, the demonic signature on it is, I hate God. I hate Jesus. I hate love. I act like I love, but my love is flesh. I want control. I want you all to conform to the thing that makes it work for us. I want my monopoly on the arts. I want to vet who's in and who's out. I want to gossip in the newspaper. I want to put that Obama sticker on my Subaru. I have got anything outside that comes under the subjectivity of our hatred and the overt transmission of our hatred. In other words, they become the object of our hatred. And this is not them speaking. This is just the thing that's in them, speaking with a loud voice. And they all compete to see how old your bags are when you're checking out. Like if you have these old bags that you brought in with you, it's like you're really, you're really down, baby. You're just so cool. If you got your kids with you and they're all um, cool, you know what I mean? They're, they've, They've been vetted and over to the other side, and they, but they were there earlier than anyone else because they're really cool, which simply means they were pedof pedophilic. They were put into prostitution by pedophiles. That's all that means. That's why they um, will speak in a sophisticated manner. Which is really satanic ritual and under the veil. But it's, you know, but hey, you know, that's the nerve you touch and you go into the church and there's Satan and you say, um, how come, I thought this was supposed to be a prayer meeting. <laughs> Ooh, you touch that nerve. We're going to kill you. 
And so I, you know, me like other people came to the planet, I suppose. What do you think our purpose is here? Um, for my purpose really is, I, I mean, what do you want here? Was there something you want? No, there's nothing I want here on earth because earth is fleeting. So there's really, I mean, I want to produce a good, uh, uh, an album here that we're working on for Jesus, for the Lord, you know, that would be, that would be beautiful and unbelievable and amazing, but it would be not from them. You know what I mean? Not from David Geffen, you know, who runs the Christian music industry. Not from them in Nashville, who are, are um, just as bad as they are in, in, on, in L.A. Not from them. And when I say bad, what I mean is posing as this whole Christian thing, but it's all really the entertainment business. And the Christian this, that, the other thing, is just another way to get famous, you know. It, it's got nothing to do with the spirit. Okay, and you know, and then the songs are going to be more rockish, more poppy, more, they're going to sound more and more like the world until there's, there are, if you listen to this station here called M88, which is one of the most hilarious attempts at um, deception that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this is, this is absolutely, you have to see, you have to hear this station to believe it. I used to play it on my early podcast just because I, I couldn't believe it. So you're hearing that like knockoffs of the, of rock songs that are like popular right now. You're hearing these knockoffs of like the chili peppers and different things, only with the name Jesus inserted. <laughs> oh gosh, it's, it's I want you. Oh, oh, I want you. Oh, so, oh, Jesus, I want you. Huh? You know what I mean? It's like this whole like sexual thing going, and then all of a sudden it's Jesus is the name that's coming into it, you know? Um, no, there's nothing I can say about it. I, you know, it's, it's across the board and around the world and there's no, uh, escape from it. It's just, um, there will be a pulling. The hook is going to come out now. And I'm not going to be deviating from this message because you see all of these shows the whole purpose of the, the talk is not for obviously me to be linear and eloquent because that's never going to happen. The point is I'm eloquent in, in, in the spirit, but not in the carnal, you know, the way they like to put things together, you know, with a little bouncing ball. Follow along, children. See the bouncing ball? You're probably too young to remember the bouncing ball, but they used to have the the bouncing ball would bounce over the lyrics of a song so everyone would sing together. And they would project that onto a screen and they'd see the lyrics on a big screen and the ball would bounce from lyric to lyric in the cadence of the song. It was pretty cool, actually. It got everyone to sing the same thing at the same time. So if you sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat, you're not going to have 15 different der derivations of it. Everyone's going to be doing their own, hopefully. Um... So the point is, is that, uh, you know, the planet is what it is and, and man is what he, what he is. And, uh, you know, humans are what they are. Uh, humans are dangerous when they will not admit what they are to themselves because then they tend to blame other people for things they perceive to be wrong. And then wars are, and, and pain and suffering and darkness ensues. I'm here to tell you that if it wasn't for your Lord, your God, your Creator, who you should be on your face to right now, but you won't, this God uh, has shown me that the time is run out. The prelude to World War III and all that is on track, and there is no change in status. The, um, I've noticed the chemtrails, they've ramped it up to where it's pretty much 24-7, the earth is shrouded in chemicals. The GMO foods, the, the apocalypse, the unveiling of all things to show the poisoning of the people going on by the governments of the world and by giant corporations and whatnot without stopping. 
you know, it's almost like, yes, you're the host and they need you, but they're killing you at the same time. And they have to kill you in order to extract money and power from you so they can be powerful and have money. And um, so this system, you know, that it's not, you don't look at Monsanto only, you know. The system is global. Everywhere there's a human heart, there is corruption. And when you look at children, as I go back to my own childhood, when children are in the, in the you know, toddlers, they're evil, man. The same evil that they're going to be later on, you can see it then. I remember when I was really young and I, I wouldn't, um, you know, there was the cool kids and then there was the not so cool kids and one would come over to me and go, suffer. He'd make up songs and say, you're suffering. Go ahead and suffer. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm like, this is out of the blue. And why would he say that? You know, I mean, what is the glee in that? Again, the system demands there are a certain amount of lambs for the wolves to prey on. The wolves will prey on the lambs and hurt the innocent in order to keep the world going. The world is built on the blood of innocence. The world today is completely powered by the blood of innocence. And Yahweh has a time clock for the end of that to come. And that time clock is run out. And the comeuppance, the shift, the opposite, the quash, the flip, the turnaround, the flipping it over on, the reversal is going to be palpable. And make no mistake, all the horrors that you will see upon the earth of the failure of man's institutions is part of the comeuppance and justice. But it's also just a befitting you reap what you sow. You cannot build a world on the blood of innocence and expect it to survive. But don't be so upset or like taking it on your shoulders because in the very beginning, it was planned to be that way because there's a bigger philosophical picture here. It needed to be that for the good to come, for the good to be birthed out of it, for the Lord to get what he wanted out of it. He had to have it like it is. And do we care if, you know, the farmer plants the field and he harvests that which is his and the rest of it, the dirt and the seeds that didn't happen and all the others, the rest of it is left as the farmer heads to the marketplace and leaves the field in the background. It's no longer relevant. He's off to the next thing and they won't be planting again until the next cycle. Well, the next cycle after this one on the earth uh, would be... Um, a whole different thing anyway. So we won't be returning to this system or the way this was, but we are on the verge of a massive change and you can feel it. And that's why people can't bring peace. And, and what the Obama administration believes is that he's still running to be the Antichrist. He still thinks he's the Antichrist. He thinks he was appointed by Satan to take control of the world or Lucifer, if you like. That's really what they like to call their God. And um, that they believe that they are going to be having a Luciferic New World Order, which he is going to be indwelt by Satan, and he's going to have supernatural powers to rule over the earth, and he believes he is that guy. And I don't really have a lot of evidence to dispute that. When I see the cult of personality that's taking place, in other words, no matter how many diplomats get murdered, no matter how many people die, it's all for you, Damien. Remember the Omen one? It's all for you, Damien. In other words, it doesn't matter what happens, the economy, soup lines, food lines, destruction of everything, uh, it's all for you, Damien. Even if I die, it's all for you. They're all hypnotized to do that because they belong to him. And, uh, you know, it's interesting how, how Romney pointed out 47%, um, you know, won't vote for him because they're in the tank for Obama. It's not because of the welfare of Mr. Romney. It's not because of the welfare that they're with him. You gotta be kidding me. It's that they're with him in spirit. They are an army. They are being activated. But what they don't understand and what Obama doesn't understand and what the secret societies don't understand, this is not about them. They are doing what they were programmed by Yahweh to do at this time. 
Everything is on track according to the Lord. Everything is the word of God. Everything is sanctified, justified, and sacred. Everything is perfect and good. Everything is lovely, actually. You scared yet? He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about everyone in every church, every government institution, every corporation. He knows all about everything that people had to do to stick the knife into the innocent one in order to be somebody. And everybody knows it, and it's going to be brought to a quash. And that's all I seem to want to talk about these days. Because it's, um, so in other words, the ambassador um, is being now celebrated by Occupy Wall Street. Right there, uh, there was a, a kid um, on a video saying that, you know, they did a great job murdering the ambassador. Hope they murder everybody. And that's what he said from Occupy Wall Street. And that's exactly the kind of thing we would expect to see at this point. Americans cheering on the death of the ambassadors. That's why you don't hear Obama saying anything because most of his supporters like the fact that the ambassador is killed. They want more bloodlust. They loved it when he was taking drones and taking out you know, whole families. They want to see more of that kind of thing. It doesn't matter what he does, they're with him and they want to try to build him. Now, the question you may have is, but does that mean he is the Antichrist? And the answer is, I don't, you know, I don't have a confirmation on that. I'm just telling you this is the time. The end goes on a long time. It's not, it's, it's, it's expanded beyond, you know, what it looks like. And, you know, when it says it goes seven years this year. No, those seven years and those, those time periods that you see in the Bible are not accurate. They're, they're not human time. It's not in human time. It's not an earth time. So when we say that the quash is here, it means, you know, it may look like slow motion to a lot of people, but make no mistake, it's um, turning and the tables will turn on those who made their world, which was fleeting to begin with, which makes them utter idiots. It's just almost laughable, but it's so sad. Okay, I got that a lot in one breath. Um, yeah, I watch in horror. I watch in horror. I watch, you, know, you know, if it wasn't so sad, like I say, it would be hilarious. But it is sad. To see them doubling down on something that is not going to work any longer. To see them doubling down on the thing that always used to work before. And suddenly, nothing works. There is no order that they can discern because... The order has changed from what it was in the beginning. So their new world order is moot because it, the thing has changed. There can't be any new world order because there will never be a new world in their definition. There will be a new world, but it won't be this dimension and it won't be have anything to do with this. It, it will be a world that they're not welcome in anyway and nor would they want to be there. They will not go on forever and ever. They, they are not going on now because this being an illusion, let me just put it this way, they don't exist to begin with. And, and, and the memory of them is going to be wiped according to the Lord. In the book of Revelation, he says that every tear will be dried, which means is another way of saying that all the memories will be gone. If you don't have the memory of the trauma, then you don't cry over it, do you? So when they say every tear will be dried, it just means when in the dimension that we're heading into, the actual memory of people isn't there anymore. It's just now, now, now. So there is no existence. It, it, there's no issue about existence. Besides that, they want to die. They don't, you know, even though death is, is a moot point as well, because there really is no death here. But, you know, again, I'm getting, I'm pushing beyond the veil and beyond most people's understanding about the way things are because we do live in a 3D world. And um, so I'm just, I'm just kind of sometimes leap into the spirit of where it's really heading. And it's, it's, it's 
they don't exist there right now, this moment, but uh, whatever it is, it was a necessary thing, this pain and suffering and, and all the drama that's gone on and the whole masquerade because nobody is who they seem to be. Nothing is what it seems to be. Everything is something else. So, the point is, is that the Lord will make you aware of your situation, like Bridge on the River Kwai, when that guy finally realized he built a bridge for the enemy and blew it up. So you can finally realize you've been building the bridge for the enemy your whole life. All of you, we all, all of us, and I want to include myself, of course, we're all in the same boat here in that sense. But it's the people that wake up and, and go home to the Father, you know, in spirit, are the ones who are really saved. And that way has been made possible by Jesus. But when I told you a few years ago, the doors have been shut. Since that time, the confirmation is Jesus has been going down, down, down in the consciousness of, of the world. Just before the end, he will be non-existent, except in, in, a, in a few here and a few there. You know, the churches they don't worry about because it's more like a, you know, it's an empty ritual. So it's a few here and a few there and a few here and a few there. But I mean, in the consciousness of people, it's sequestered away in these buildings or, you know, that, and, and the Christian has no power any longer to affect change, candidates, people that rule things. The Christian has been sequestered into his little rooms that are official and he's been neutered so that he, when he prays, nobody even gives it another thought. Uh, it's incredible, it's incredible, but you know, this is what, my job is simply tell you that because that's what we do. We do that, we do that job. I define success as anyone who can grok, discern, find, see, embrace the truth, and then live in that. But it's hard because part, most of living the truth just means living with your eyes open to it. And the, what's hard is that you tend to become, um, you know, if you don't watch yourself, you'll become cynical. You know, you'll say it's all corrupt, it's all, you know, just rescue me, Lord, this is ridiculous and you know you you won't participate anymore because you'll you'll think that being delivered means you sit there waiting to be picked up and then I have a lot of friends who have been journeying on with them on the faith and they want um, you know World War three to take care of the evil bastards on this earth and to get their comeuppance and they're just here to see that vengeance and that's actually biblical because in, in Revelation 18, the Lord says, rejoice all of you who have been slain from the beginning of the earth. All you prophets and all you saints and all you people who have been faithful to Jesus and all you people who have been persecuted and kicked out and cast out. A true Christian is kicked out of everything, including your you know, mausoleums they call church. You're kicked out. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be overt about it but they'll just see that you're not gonna be double-minded. If you're not gonna be double-minded, if you're gonna be a real Christian, you won't find a home in any church or you won't find a home in uh, most anywhere. You'll, you'll have a hard life and it'll be, you'll be walking alone through this world. Rather than focusing on, you know, so, so the Lord gives you, you know, and, and you know, they could target you and kill you and whatnot. And they have, you know, so uh, just like abortion is like a sacred right. It's because those are the innocent that can't protect themselves. And so that becomes very important to the uh, canon of, um, you know, unfortunately America, because anyone that adopts that in the world will be put to extinction, will be as if they never were. The Lord is really very serious about his little children. I'd say Matthew 18.6 applies to all abortionists because 
you're preventing a child from coming into the world that may have been one of his. Therefore, a millstone will be thrown, tied around your neck and you'll be drowned at the bottom of the sea. And, and, if, and a worse punishment than that will come your way. Nobody gets away with anything here. We all reap what we sow. You know, so, you know, try to be, you know, the, salvation is an individual walk. It's not a collective one. You know, church is the body of believers, not a building. Um, the believers are in all religions. So try to find out who your brothers and sisters are. And try to develop a network of people that are trustworthy, that you can pray with and fellowship with, because that's the only way you're going to have it. Because basically, true, real, actual worship and real truth here is banned in, a, in the world. It's banned in America as it is in Russia and every other country. People who walk in the truth are considered social pariahs because the society depends on the lie in order to co to, to for its existence as the glue. The lie is the glue of its existence. That's why it doesn't matter if politicians lie because they're going to keep getting elected because people want them to lie. They just want to hear the lie they like. There's lie brand A and lie brand B. And they want their brand of lying. And if the politician will do that, then they don't have to wake up. But the problem is if they don't wake up, then they're going to be gone. Gone meaning never having been in the first place. And that's, I keep reiterating this because this seems to be what the Lord wants to tell you. If you refuse to wake up and if you think this life here is it, then it will be. I've seen, I know people say, oh, I've got a burden for my family. I pray for them. I'm hoping the Lord will give them an exception. No, there is no, it's, it's up to them. It's not up to you. If their hearts aren't soft, if they go into death with this idea of rejecting Jesus Christ and the Lord and all that, um, that's what they, they will, you know, the Bible says they go into um, the lake and fire forever and ever, but I've, figured out that that time period is not actually forever and ever and ever and ever. It's really more like um, gone. In other words, you're not there where they are. And never having been means forgotten. You know, it's, it's more like being cast in the outer darkness. But I think the fire and brimstone gives it, a, it, gives it a, a imagery that it's like pain and torture, suffering of burning. No one likes to burn. And I, I find the, the, the analogy good. You know, um, there, there's people say there's no hell and there is a hell. People have had near-death experiences, have experienced a hell. I can tell you this. There is, um, there are realms and hells that you would never want to be in that are worse than the fire and brimstone um, analogy in the Bible. They're worse than that imagery. But again, it's not forever because it's this, this, this whole birthing process. And when the birth actually takes place, which is referred to in the Bible as Jesus' name means I make all things new. That's his ultimate name that people can't utter. That's the name that no one knew but him. You know, that's the name. I make all things new. Yes, because I am the creator. But the secret to that is I am and I am, you know, meaning I am meaning I am, meaning I am, meaning there is nothing but I am, there is no you. And that's the other secret, which is, you know, ultimately it's either conformed to Christ or it doesn't exist. So there is no, at that moment when the tears are dried and all that, there's no need for being consciously aware of someone else being punished because there is no one else. And that's an esoteric truth that ultimately you will understand at, in time, but now is not the time and nothing to worry about. That's all part of the breaking process for you to understand he is God, you are not. He is, and for you to be I am, you must be I am in alignment with him because he is I am. And so there's only one, and that is John 17. Go read that. I am, and there is no other. We are one in him, him in us, but we are just one thing. And 
we have division and, and div here to the opposites of good and evil, light and dark, etc. The Satanist will try to embrace the opposites and try to harness it for his own use. But the sands of time are ticking and running out and have run out. The hourglass is out of sand. As prophesied from the very beginning in the book of Genesis, that there would be um, a Messiah who would be rejected and then the end will come. When I say rejected, I don't mean people rejecting him in the Bible. What I mean is to where it's not only made illegal, but it's forgotten about. In other words, it's eradicated from the consciousness of people. And then I would say that would be a, a if you want to have a temporal indicator of exactly when there would be a uh, mass extinction event or whatever, it would be, and we're getting you know, pretty close to where it, Jesus becomes irrelevant on planet Earth, just like Mohammed and all the rest of them. You know, he becomes just another, you know, but it's all kind of forgotten about. And at that point, um, uh, that would be the time marker for, and we're about there right now. So, you know, that, that's basically um, it. And if there is no World War III, it would be because the restrainer has given more time. I prayed for more time. You ever hear that expression, we're on borrowed time? Any time you get now is borrowed. It's like a little chunk of something that wasn't there. It's, it's like some kind of, you know, anomaly in a way. But it's not an anomaly. It's all planned. But I mean, it's, it's not like we're spinning out in time like 1685 or 1900 or 1950. It's not like that. It's, you might as well not even have the calendar do uh, years anymore, like a 2012, 13. It's irrelevant. You might as well just have the calendar be, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc., and forget about have numbering the uh, dates and the years and the times anymore. Because time itself is um, completely subjective. For some, it spans out indefinitely and takes forever. For others, it's, it's you know, it's collapsed in on itself where it's all blurred together. Your past, your present, your future is all kind of like one thing right now. It's, there is no real linear, linear time anymore. And that's another indicator that the, the sands of time have run out of the hourglass and so this is it. And what happens when this is it is that um, there's an extinction, you know, basically it's to look at it from a non-personal way, a scientific way, it means that, uh, okay, so the earth cannot be sustained and it, there's an extinction event of some kind, of some magnitude that occurs. Whether through war or through um, uh, manipulation of the environment or through um, you know, a comet or through some sort of uh, planet X or through you know, anything like that or any number of those or all of the above uh, comes at a time like this. You know, you look for the harbingers is what the, what the seers would look for, the harbinger. Look for the harbinger. We've had all the harbingers. All the harbingers have come and gone and done their thing. They've harbinged already. There doesn't need to be another harbinger. So the question becomes, who are you? And what do you want? Well, I'll keep doing podcasts and producing music, uh, you know, and, and even ramping it up to produce CDs for these times because it may go on 20 or 30 years like this, you know. Again, time's irrelevant, but it doesn't mean, for me, I'm it, basically what you have to know is like Revelation 18, 19 is, is really real. The, all that stood with the, the merchant, the people of the earth, the, the witches really originally, who developed a system called Babylon that was for buying, selling, and trading and for um, you know, global dominion and, and, and so on and so forth that are built on the blood of innocence. You know? And it's, it's hard for people to see that, but, but if you look carefully, you'll see. When that system comes down, and it will, the Lord says, rejoice for I have avenged you on her, meaning Babylon. I've avenged you on her, meaning Mystery Babylon. 
I have finally brought justice to those who built their empires on the blood of my children. On the blood of innocence, on the blood of stealing from people that were weaker, et cetera, et cetera. This kind of dog eat dog world. Don't stand with the, with the strong dogs. Stand with the saints who have been slain from the, from the lamb who has been slain from the foundation of the world because that is salvation. That's the only respite in the storm of what's to come. The rest of it is going to be plowed under. And it's, you know, it's... The sad thing for me is people think it's some personal thing. If you look carefully at the calendars, you'll see that this was sewn in, factored in from the very beginning before even, you know... Uh, there was a time clock on this from the very, very beginning. And um, the Lord will never allow uh, people to not reap what they sow. In other words, you know, if you build a world on the blood of innocence and, you know, the, 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 the destruction of innocence as a means to power, which is how it's done. And that's, that's how the whole world works. And that's the way of the world as well. If, so the way of the world and those who are along the way of the world, meaning you make other people suffer in order, in order to get yours, um, you're gonna burn. And it doesn't matter if you are uh, Oh, so holy, an acolyte, a choir boy, an altar boy, um, you know, uh, Gandhi. It doesn't matter, goody two-shoes. It doesn't really matter how you appear um, above the veil, but how it is underneath the veil. Who you really are. And I think if you look, you'll find we all suck. None of us. I mean, we're, none of us is righteous. No, not even one. So that's where Jesus actually, that's what he's for, is to give us his righteousness because we have none of our own so we can stand before the holy God and not burn to death. It's just almost a scientific issue rather than a, a legal issue, rather than a I want this or I think that or it might be that or here's my opinion. It's got nothing to do with that. It's, it's black and white legal and scientific issue. And it's going to happen whether you're ready or not. Um, the bill is going to be paid. The purpose of the de collapse of all the governments and all the people and everyone into fighting and yelling and screaming is justice. Yeah, but all those innocent people that are hurting and dying, they're going to be the first ones to go, that's not fair. And I would say, I would, if I were you, I would, I would restrict your judgment on that and withhold it. Rather than judging and berating God, as we all seem to love to do, what we should do is suspend our um, judgment and rather praise God instead relying on our faith that one day we will know the answer as to why we had to go through this. As far as the um, entertainment business and all the people, th you know, well, I guess you figured out that's not Mecca, huh? When you see your favorite acts going from casino to casino and no new artists, but all the old regurgitating, having to do their all the songs again, it's an apocalypse of sorts for, for all these industries are running into their own apocalypse. No, you make music as a joy to the Lord because you want to. I intend to produce music right up until the, uh, well, in the form of CDs. I'm not any longer going to, um, you know, I might share a track here and there, but, I, you know, briefly, but I, it's... Um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And, you know, I, I just feel like uh, to do it right, you really need to spend a lot more time than, 
you know, anyone can do a track in a day or two days or whatever, but I, I prefer to, uh, you know, work on a project or a collection of songs at a time that's, you know, worthwhile. And I suppose I'm even informing myself I should be writing about this. You know, really, I should be writing about, um, will there be a road warrior apocalypse? Uh, a rolling apocalypse? Yeah, it could be, you know, um, where there's time, where there's roving gangs of, you wouldn't want to live in a world like that, where there's lawlessness and, and, and roving gangs where might is right. And if you're just uh, sitting there, if, if, if you've got anything at all, you'll be stripped bare. I, I would refer you to the Book of Eli, great movie, great music. And, um, and just look at the desperate times and how people would be and how they'd be waiting. Like if you'd be traveling from one city to another, They'd be waiting under bridges, and these were like cannibals, and they would cannibalize each other. And I think that was a, a pretty amazing revelation because it was a, kind of a post-apocalyptic world. Will there be a world like that? Probably. You know, like I say, this it's. Um, but you know, I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say, this is your time, and let this podcast just break your head open. You know, so you can see some things. You know, break open your con. Bust it loose so you can take a look around. And uh, it's not pleasant. I mean, I, look, do I blame people for, for running back into watching football and going to concerts and, 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 you know, working for the weekend and all that if you have a job? Um, great. But the system has collapsed. There is no more rhyme or reason to it. And we are devolving into chaos in man's terms, but this is order in God's terms. So when I align myself with the Lord and I see the chaos, for me, it's order. It's simply, you know, long overdue. Uh, not overdue in God's terms, but overdue in my terms. Long overdue correction of what shouldn't be there in the first place. Do you want to be part of a system that hurts innocent ones and children and orders for you? I know it's hard for you to see the connection between your job and the destruction of innocence. But it's there, believe me. If you will look at the big picture, you'll see it's there. You know, I used to think, oh gosh, I'm putting gas in my car, another 50,000 people had to die. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I mean, and that's not a far-fetched statement to make. Hence, all of our businesses are built on the blood of innocence. No matter how squeaky clean you've been in your life, and how good you've been to others, and how and you know, and how many times you go to church and 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 take part in the charity and the bake sale and this and that and little league and all the good things you've done. It has nothing to do with that. It's not a it's not a meritocracy here. It's you're not God. It's your life. You know, it matters, but it, in the end, it it really it's not relevant. Your opinion of what you've done or not done especially if you're patting yourself on the back. Most of us are not patting ourselves on the back. When I look at the world, I see we have shared responsibility. But on the other hand, I see that we've done the best we could. This is the best world that man could rot. This is it. This is our best. So, you know, intervention by the Holy God comes... As with welcome for me. I welcome him to put order in the world. Because I know man will not because of, his, of corruption. Because man is corrupt at the end of the day. You're going to take the deal. You know, you're going you're gonna to bow down before men so they can vet you and make you into somebody. And uh, that, that whole group is then, you know, devoted to Lucifer, God of this world, who can appoint people to different positions. Jesus was offered all the positions to be head of it all, but he wouldn't bow down. So if you'll bow down before your group of people who are beholden to Lucifer, same thing by proxy, they will make you a made man, a maid will put you into a position somewhere. Most people will go to their position and just shut the F up. The problem becomes when it's going off the cliff uh, and everyone's going to die, it's important for people to understand that and understand the reasons why has nothing to do with God smacking them down. It has to do with them and the decisions they made and the fact of the golden rule being, in effect, you will reap what you sow. 
the law of karma, will mean that civilization will collapse. It wouldn't collapse if you didn't do what you did, but being a human being, you're going to do exactly what you did. And um, so getting to the point of understanding and having compassion, forgiveness, uh, forgiveness of self and God being the two things that are just huge on the list. With God, you have to give him a pass because what you see in your life and what you're complaining about isn't really the big picture. So through faith, you have to suspend your judgment of God until, you know, just say that I'm through my faith, I'm going to love you, Lord, because you create and what you've created is good. And I'm going to suspend that until later. I, I'm going to stop trying to make judgments about it. As far as your fellow man, um, you know, don't judge or you'll be judged, yes, but, but you need to make judgments and discernments about what you're looking at. If people are sacrificing um, other people or other civilizations so that they can boost themselves, then it would be, without making a judgment, like I hate it, how dare you, whatever, just observing that that's happening is not making a judgment. It's like if I go into the church and I see that they're doing satanic rituals at midnight on a Sunday night uh, to some moon god or some thing where the witches are running it and all that, and then they're back to doing this, their other stuff on Monday or Tuesday, Observing it doesn't make me judgmental. They can't have you there if you're not going to be down with the program. But if I observe it, it doesn't mean that I'm evil or judging. It just means that I'm observing that's the kind of thing that the, the, the uh, cross and the steeple and all that is just a front for the same old, same old. Artists who are vetted today, who appear in Rolling Stone magazine and whatnot, these have um, basically abrogated their responsibility as human beings and uh, they were in a position where they could have influenced other people for the good, but they chose instead to have everyone contemplate their navel or their penises or their vaginas or their um, um, <laughs> a-holes or whatever and or their fatness or their thinness or their bling or their um, hair appointments or their cappuccinos or their whatever to all of this becomes like the whole thing it revolves around and those who are cool are like those who are like you know down with the gay marriage and down with this in other words there everything is 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 defined through the um lens of sex acts and um you know and overt kinds of charades that would indicate how cool one is um including, of course, the charities and whatnot have to be done in the sight of men. Jesus says, when you do your charity, don't do it in the sight of men. Do it quietly. Don't do it and have a grandstand thing that I'm, I'm going to join the Peace Corps and I'm doing all this stuff because then I'll return to where I was and I'll be cool because I was there and I've done this experience and that and I've done all these experiences and now I'm back and I'm cool. I'm down with the whole thing. I understand the whole thing down as the world's my oyster, blah, blah, blah. And with all this background of service and everything, everyone's going to boost me to be like a leader. So you do it in, ex in expectation of getting something for it. Jesus says, do it where there's not going to be any expectation of a pop. Uh, with the Satanists, everything is veneer and everything is sheen and everything is, uh, everything is a masquerade. So what school you went to, it doesn't really matter if you went to Harvard and Occidental and, and Columbia, you know, which our president has. Um, those are the right places to have been, you know, for this whole thing, this vetting process to take place. The records are sealed maybe because he didn't get good grades. You know, it's really not about that. It's, it's all about having the right appearance. And unfortunately, people respect um, the, the disrespectable and they disrespect the respectable. Um, everything is the opposite. And once your mind goes all the way opposite, you'll, you'll cheer on the Muslims while at the same time you're trying to defend um, women's rights. It's like women's rights and Muslim Islam doesn't go together. <laughs> It's the Muslims that put gays to death 
and yet you have gay leftists embracing Islam where they would be put to death ordinarily, but uh, in this case, it's okay because there's a greater political agenda. How amazing is... I, I can't even... It's, it's, it's impossible to watch. It's literally... It, trust me, it's impossible to watch when you really look at what's going on. It's impossible... It's just so sad to um, see how people don't care. The, the hearts of many will wax cold, and we're seeing that right before our eyes. Life is cheap. Ambassador gets killed, this gets killed, it doesn't matter anymore. You get killed, it doesn't matter. We get killed, it doesn't matter. War kills lots of people, won't matter, just so I get my crumbs at the end of the day from the government. It goes on and on, and, and it's now, life has gotten so cheap, it's cheaper than corn. It's cheaper than trees. And that won't stop them either. They won't stop to the last breath. And even when they get to their last breath, they'll say, how dare you do that to me? I deserve better. And um, that's, you know, in a nutshell, that's kind of the consciousness and that's the way you're feeling and reflecting the way you're feeling. I'm here to tell you that you're not feeling, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not insane. You know, I mean, look, the era of cool is over. The era of being vetted by the leftist Rolling Stone magazine is over. It's, it's over. It's so over. It's over. What's cool is being real. Like, say, if you're going to create music to make it real, your own, not some knockoff of something that you think someone will like or whatever, or art or, you know, painting or anything like that. Um, I'm not surprised to see Jesus and Urine returning to um, New York uh, to be part of the taxpayer-funded uh, arts in America. Absolutely, I find Jesus and Urine to be a befitting metaphor for what's happened to America. I think America is in urine. And I think it's in shambles. And I, I do believe it's... Uh, As I said, the clock has run out. It's, it's, it's too late for meritocracy. It's too late for um, do-gooders to jump in and try to you know, get somewhere by doing good. And it's too late. Check this out. It's too late for Satanists to do rituals to change anything. They now do their rituals and nothing happens. And the people they cast spells on aren't affected anymore. And the Christians that pray in the churches don't scare people anymore. Nothing, not everything is everything. Nothing is everything. Nothing is nothing is nothing is nothing. Nothing matters anymore, which is why none of the rituals work, which is why you see life being cheapened because if the bastard gets killed, not only does it not matter, but Occupy Wall Street's cheering it on and wants more killed. The truth about all this is ugly and it's all come out. So I've got to translate a lot of this into sound and music and, 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 and certain kinds of frequencies and things. I have to translate all this. At the same time, I feel like I need a remedy. And it's true. When I played stuff, we have a song in 432 Hertz. And 432 Hertz was supposedly a healing vibe of God, just like kind of 528 is supposed to be as well. And the 432 does affect you. You do notice a change in the atmosphere for the better. So I'm grateful to have learned that. And I will, you know, perhaps I'll do a whole record in that. I'm, I'm not sure, but... You know, it's kind of the time of the prophets ended. There really is no more prophecy to come other than what the Bible says. Prophecy has been reduced to, you know, the real prophecy 
in the spirit of the Old Testament, it, it, three quarters of it or four fifths of it, or even more, 90% of it is really confronting the powers that be, uh, whether they're on the right course, the wrong course, usually on the wrong course, to correct that course before there's a judgment of the Almighty Yahweh. And that's basically what it's been in, in, in uh, the other parts, has been predicting things like the coming of Messiah and the, 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 the coming of the end of the earth and things like that. And, and um, it's almost like, you know, now it's a time not so much of prophecy, but a time of revelation, of revealing what has already been revealed, but, but, but removing the veil from it and explaining what's there, trying to prove as I've done over the years, I've tried to prove to you that there isn't, that it's a, it's your life and my life are like a legal matter before it, for, for an almighty judge. And it's, it's a legal issue. And, you know, so you try to inform the collectives out there, like churches and secret societies especially, that who do believe they're beholden to God and they do believe God has them and some of these cults and so forth. And you try to explain to them the legal matter. Not to castigate them or paint it all with a broad brush. It's, it's you know, if there's an affiliation to the state and an oath, that has to be removed because it's a legal issue. Does that in influence people's individual salvation? Does that ruin it? No, because the individuals are judged, not collectives. So the good news is it's always going to be on an individual basis. So technically you could be in your church or your brothel or your, um, uh, hook, your opium den or wherever you are, and it's going to be you and your relationship with him. That's going to be the thing at the end of the day. That's going to be the legal matter. What do you believe? Who are you? Who do you believe? You know, do you believe? And um, along with belief, eventually comes faith and service. And, um, you know, in other words, there's, there's not such a holding on to this world because who can hold on to this world? People keep holding on, they die. So the good news to the churches is it's an individual case. case and that's what Jesus was saying about the church. To some, um, wrath, and to others, not. Same thing with the book of Jude. To some, save with fire, others not. Same with, same with the fear of the fire. You know, fear will save people the, in the last days. But, but definitely it's an individual issue. So we don't have, the only thing with the churches that the collective oath changes the kind of worship and the things people say because part of that oath is for the church, for the pastors, and for the people to not talk about the government or talk about various things going on in the world. And, you know, when you start editing out the truth, it taints the whole thing. It poisons the whole well. And I think that's what the Lord's saying to you. He's saying, you know, it's... I mean, I, I don't find any need to go to any church, but, it, the, the, you know, I, I, I have nothing against going and... and taking part in the ritual, it's fine. But the issue that people tend to make an oath to the church that has made an oath to the state, and then that's where they get in trouble. That's why the Lord says, come out of her, my people, because that's Babylon. That's a slave contract, and that's Babylon. And um, the only thing that can make you free of Babylon is when you say, come out of her, my people. It's not your will. I'm going to separate from everything and just not talk to anyone anymore. That's not it at all. It's a spirit. At the end of the day, only Jesus can actually pull someone out of the thing and re-justify them as instead of who they were, but under his righteousness, you're a new creature in Christ. Therefore, you can stand before the holy God and therefore you can go free. And it's just that simple. It's a legal matter. It's an individual matter. And that's why a lot of the uh, people have kind of woken up and they don't participate in the Crystal Cathedral or the, um, you know, the Grace Church or the Calvary Chapel or any of these things because, or the Willow Creeks or the Saddlebacks or whatever because they realize and recognize that um, 
They have brothers and sisters all over the place, and many of whom don't have that same religious framework. So it's very disingenuous, the things that the church teaches, and at the same time, especially when they teach the rapture theory. Um, and, you know, there's a tendency for evangelicals, for example, which are Protestants, for evangelicals to not vote or not participate in anything to do politically. So, and that's all done by design so that they won't vote, to, to sequester their votes, so that the same secular godless world could continue, which couldn't happen unless there was an oath to the state that that church had made. And that's my point. And that nobody can argue with because it's, it's, it's like refuting the sun being in the sky. It's, it's, it's impossible. So what are you going to do about it? And what I've done about it is, um, this was my solution. I just asked the Lord where to go and what to do. There are many people I know who have longed for the fellowship in churches and they, they can't get away from it. And when I've tried to explain this legal matter, they, their eyes glaze over. They just don't, they don't want to understand it and they don't, they don't want to go there. It's useless for me to tell them, well, you're going to burn. I don't know. They're not, you know, life isn't over yet. God has to deal with people. I've, I've got to believe that people that really are earnestly there are crying out to the Lord and going to Bible study and trying to get something out of it. I have to believe the Lord has them. So no, I don't believe in a collective damnation. No, I don't. I think I used to in a way, um, and I wasn't really wrong, but I've seen, I've seen, you know, lately the Lord has put on my heart that no worries. He deals with all of us individually. The wheat and the tares grow together. There's, there's a lot of earnest people in the church system. They don't even know it's a system. They don't even know. They have no idea about the, the, the legal matter I'm talking about. And, and, um, as far as corruption, they've, they've, these pure hearts that are there, they're not shown the corruption that's going on behind the scenes. They're, they're kept uh, kind of like in the outer banks of it in order to uh, justify it. You know, that the, the, a smart pastor, even if he's a Satanist, will keep a lot of lambs around as a cover because he figures that God's not going to kill everybody if he's got those around. And that's a very cynical way to go, and I... Thank God I don't have to even think that way, but that's the way some of them think. Lambs being, you know, technically Jesus' children, who, um, and then, and you know, and then birth lambs being those people that are like pure hearts that are from birth, and they, they never would be part of the satanic thing because it just wouldn't ever... You know, the world would call them retards, let's say, retards. that just wouldn't even think that there's something like that going on. Because, as the Bible says, and this is a truth that you can apply to everything, to the pure, all things are pure. To the pure, all things are pure. To a pure heart, everything is above board. There is no double-minded, duplicitous nod winking going on. Nod and a wink wouldn't mean anything to someone like that. People have nodded and winked at me thinking that, you know, I understand what they're talking about. And it's like, I'm sorry, I do know what the nod and the wink means, um, but I'm just not going there. Because I don't have faith in man's ability to save me or anyone else. And I believe that man is in for a huge amount of sorrow and pain, which is unnecessary, and I don't want to see that happen. So no, I'm not going to go there. With, I'm going to keep straight ahead because it, otherwise it, it just gets ruined. And, and man is crying out going, no, we all have to be one to overcome this thing. It's like, no, we don't have to be one. There is no collective salvation and man will never be one. Man will always be divided because man is divided. We are all divided within our own selves from birth. We're split are, you know, whether it was done by DNA or, you know, the fall of man, whatever, we're split to be fit extensions, I believe, for the fallen angels to do what they're bidding through us. And those who will agree to be used that way will get perks in this life, but it will be short-lived because you're going to die. And right now, the time has run out. Right now, there are no perks available. Have you noticed? The sands of time have run out. Right now, there is no 
nothing that the world can give you because they don't have anything more to give. The sands of time run out. Right now, there is no initiation process into the world where you'll be taken care of because there's no security anymore because the sands of time have run out. Don't you see? We are in the end apocalypse time now and all we're awaiting is, you know, a war to clean it up or earth change or whatever, something. As a friend of mine said on the internet, he said, we're in it. It's like, yeah, we're here. We're here. So I'm not surprised to see the diplomat's blood and being humiliated through the streets, which used to get a, a real American, a real red-blooded American would be up in arms about this. Right now, believe it or not, there's a question as to whether anyone's going to investigate this situation. No one of Congress is going home. Nobody, and, and Romney is not dealing with it, so I guess it's just going to go under the, be plowed under. One must, you know, avoid the, the tendency to try to, you know, put the hope on, you know, just getting rid of Barack Obama will fix it. It's, the, the, you know, the American presidency, in other words, will fix the world. No, it won't. Um, it won't fix the world, but I can understand the anger that a president who seems to get some kind of satisfaction out of ambassadors being killed or some kind of, I don't know, some sick, perverted pleasure out of it. I know the left does get, I mean, you know, the, the DNC created Occupy Wall Street. And they're saying, I, we'd like to kill more ambassadors. So that must be their, why Obama's not saying anything. That's sick, folks. That's sick. You, you, you cannot have a, and, and the point is, you're going to take it and you're going to be traumatized by that and you're going to go along with that because that, they're going to do that because they believe that's the fastest way to destroy the United States. To have you not care that your people get killed in the field. L let's forget the diplomat for a minute. In the last month, 50 people have been killed in Afghanistan. 50, 50 of our kids. Nobody bats an eye. And that's Obama's war. It's disgusting. It's, it's unbelievable. And, um, you know, if, 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 if no one confronts him, if Romney doesn't confront him, if, if everyone's trying to be politically correct and just slide through, um, you know, as uh, Thomas Sowell said, the, the great philosopher we have today in our, you know, economist philosopher, um, he said, Romney is no Reagan and you won't see another Reagan for another 50 years because if you go back and listen to the speech about the city on the hill, <laughs> Those days are over, but the point is, uh, that was true greatness and inspiration that we haven't had since him. And I know for a fact that he was also in secret societies and corrupted and all that stuff, but God used him to come forth and say these brilliant words, for example, um, to explain, you know, the thousand years of darkness that, uh, and, and, and you just have to f understand that if you go communistic, which would be you know, cult of personality around Joseph Stalin or Obama or whatever, you're talking about a thousand years of darkness and mass death on a scale. I wouldn't want anyone to have to go through. It would almost be better to commit suicide, but I don't believe in that. I believe that's a sin against God. I, I stand with the Catholics on that one. I believe that's a, that's a mortal sin. I believe that's murder, you know? You can't do that. It's not about you. You're not that important to kill yourself. You're, 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 if you want to kill yourself, it just means you're being narcissistic and taking yourself too seriously. Like, what are you, God? You're going to kill yourself? Hell with that. Well, go ahead and do it. But I mean, you know, it won't mean anything. Someone told me that when I was on the verge of killing myself. And it was hard to learn, but you know what? It jarred me out of it, and I got, I got it. It's not about me. I, God created me. I didn't create myself. 
I got to hold on. I have to have faith. I need Jesus in my life because I need faith. And the faith sees me through. And, and you know, I don't conform to any anybody's expectations. So, I mean, I tend to piss everybody off all the time. And um, I have a rebellious streak in me that's just unbelievable. It just, if you say this is the conformity over here, I'll, I'll do everything I can to destroy it, including destroy it from within. And or this is it over here. It, I won't do anything. I won't say anything. All I have to do is just go sit there. I got a thing in me that just, I just have this, I, I don't know what it is. God made me like this. Maybe for a time like this. You know, I don't know. But it's just like, if I set a rule, if I say, I want you to conform to this rule that I'm setting for myself, I'll break it and hugely. But it's all, but that spirit is silent. You know, it doesn't need to speak. The walls come down. Why do the walls come down? Because it was appointed for this time that the truth would come out. And if the truth comes out, the walls come down. That is, the walls come down for anything built on a lie. Is it built on a lie? Yes, well then the walls will come down. Same thing with Benghazi, which is, you know, it's a terrible, terrible tragedy. You know, not only has Obama not addressed it, I don't even think the, the, they even put that flag at half-mast. Late. They didn't do it right away. They did it when they were reminded to do it. I, you know, these people don't care about America. They just care about their outcome for the global system called the New World Order, which is communism and totalitarianism. And they're all vying to see who's going to be the top dog. And they're not even thinking about the United States anymore. So... If you wanted the United States to be destroyed and judgment to come, you've got it. It was the last best hope on earth and the only thing between a thousand years of darkness. I mean, here's what's between a thousand years of darkness, mass death. Mass death will, if there's no one here, there is no thousand years of darkness. The return of Christ comes after the vengeance of the Lord on Babylon. Is there anyone that dis disagrees with that out there? The new doesn't come in till the old is swept away. Is there anyone that doesn't agree with that? Incredible, you're living in a fool's paradise, a bubble, my friend. You think this system's going on? Let's look at it from the entertainment, uh, movies, music. It's regurgitation now. There's nothing new has come and won't because Books, culture, history, it's all regurgitation. It's because the sands of time have run out. There could be a new clock. There can be a new sands of time. If God wants to do that, he can do it. Uh, I'm not seeing it right now, but I'm open to it. I'm definitely open to change. I'm open to a thousand years of goodness. I'm, I'm open to something good that will stave off this darkness and death for another 200 years. I'd love that. I'm open to it, Lord, if that's what you want to bring. But the people don't want it even though they say they do. The people within themselves want justice, even if it means that they have to go. It's just built in to the cake. It's baked in, as they say. So anyway, my message to you in the churches is you individually are fine, just get right with the Lord. And as to you out there in the who are um, 
more and more disconnected because the world's more and more disconnected. Just keep on with your faith in the Lord and keep on doing the thing that you're inspired to do and work with people that ha- are similar. You know, don't be afraid to work with people or to see people or to do things because let me explain this. Nobody's immune from this, this malaise, this feeling. This Everyone wants an answer as to why it's so awful and what are we going to do to bring about some kind of salvation. Everyone's thinking about what are we going to do? Can we ever get back to that great season we had a few years ago? Are we ever going to be able to have it good again? Everyone's so down everywhere. Is there anything that could bring us back up? And I have great news for you. Yes, absolutely. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. But, you know, I would think you would say it was great news to not have collective damnation. No, I would be the last person to say all these churches are going to hell. They're not going to hell. They're just things. People decide where they want to go. It's their hearts and their decisions and it's up to them. Far be it for me to tell them what to do. They're free to go. Like with, with my, my own mother, she rejected Jesus in the end of her life. And, you know, I thought that was amazing to watch her. She wasn't interested in hearing anything from me. Maybe she rejected him because of me. I don't know. But, I, but that took place as an event. It was documented as an event. And then she died. The most curious thing is she started rejecting Jesus about six months before her death, and then doubled down on it within about two weeks before her death and went off into death hating Jesus, rejecting Christ, and saying we don't need him. I tried to explain that Jesus and God are the same, but it didn't really matter to her. I won't even venture to guess what that means. I mean, I've, I've thought, well, she's, you know... I warned her. Uh, she was warned. But the more warning she got, the more she doubled down on it. So eventually he just had to say nothing. I've had a, another family member tell me he doesn't need Jesus. He's got a DSL line straight to God. So he doesn't need Jesus. And I feel like saying... Well, if you have a DSL line to God, then you have Christ. Jesus and God are the same. So I, you know, maybe some of this is semantical. I I don't know. I I really don't know. I can't say for anybody's disposition what happens after death. You know, I don't know. I pray to God that, you know, if you want to live, that you're able to live. That being said, I know Hindus have a relationship with Jesus stronger than most Christians. Yet they don't know his name. <laughs> I know. So I'm, you know, I don't know what the disposition of people will be. Uh, I don't believe it's something like, you know, if 1% is in and the rest of them just go to hell because to hell with them, they're evil, awful people and they shouldn't be around anyway. Yeah, but God invented them. You know, God created them. So why would he create them if he didn't love them? Why would he kill them if he, want, if he loves them? Why wouldn't he find a way to t- trick them into salvation then? If boss, I don't even want to go there. See, all that stuff is just why I don't go to church because I hate all that. I hate all that. I can't, I can't handle that. Or like here in our church, you know, we're right. and you know, I, can't, I hate all that. I just can't do it. I'm just here to be a prophetic voice and I'm exercising my gift of the prophetic today. That's all I'm doing. I'm exercising that gift just like I would exercise the gift of, although I think the Lord wants me to do more. Music music is very hard, so it's like been hard lately. And so I've just been, uh, I guess that pushes me into talking more here because, you know, I feel like I need to be productive. And, um, but honestly, I've, I feel like what was there, and this has been true my whole life. Like I go to school that was a military school, the, the military school collapsed while I was there. Seems everywhere I go, something's collapsing, the country now. My whole life has had that signature on it. Do you understand that? 
you know, I mean, I've wondered about that. You know, the, the timing of me in this thing. What, what is, what's that about, Lord? With you know, I, I understand it on some level, but again, it's outside my control. Just like I'm outside my control, I cannot control myself. I can't control my destiny and the things that happen to me and the things that I'm inspired and not inspired to do. It's all the Lord. So I say, Lord, just inspire me, disinspire me, point me in this direction, steer me to that direction. Please keep the enemy away. Keep me, deliver me from evil. Father, deliver me from evil. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Guide me, Lord. Keep us from evil. We forgive so that we may be forgiven. The best saint is the one who forgives and expects bad things to happen, who then does the work of forgiveness before they even happen. Those are the, those are the great people that do that. They already know people are going to do what they do and they already forgive. Like say you're going to kill me, I already forgive you and pray for you. And that is, that's Jesus, man. That's, that's what makes it all happen. That, that right there is the key to it all. I forgive you and I'm praying for you even if you kill me. And I'm gonna lay my life down for you so that you can live because I love you. That is it. That's Christ. The, even rebellious humanity and into all its rebellion believes and is moved by that idea. That idea moves everybody. And that's all we're talking about. That's really all it is. It's just right there. And so I don't... Remember that I've been walking with the Lord, the, the lesser things I want to think and the lesser things I want to do, I'd rather be open to what he is saying. I share it with the people because then it's a connection. You see, it's, I share it with you because he shares it with me and then I share it with you and then, and then you know, that, that there's, a comp there's a work there. But it's without me thinking about it. In other words... Well, I'm going to have to get myself together and do some work for the Lord. Me, myself, and I? What? The Lord? Who's that? I love it when the Lord spontaneously deals with us and we deal with you and I and we all deal spontaneously with one another and, and no one even knows what's happening but work gets done every day and you wonder what the heck is going on here? Time just you know, schedule, it's just like, what, did that really happen? I mean, you know, and you're not even on it. It's like, it's happening, you're being used, you're doing whatever, but you're not even catching it while it's happening. I love that, that sort of time slip thing. It doesn't make you feel good about yourself because, you know, Ben wants to feel a sense of accomplishment and have a goal and have a schedule and accomplish that schedule and feel good. But the most work I see going on that is Christ goes on spontaneously and mysteriously and is wonderful. That's why I really, yeah, got to praise the Lord. Everything is about him. Everything is about this conflict between the Lord and those who reject him. It seems that everything is about that on earth. The art, humanities, universities, Politics all seems to be about, you know, people that uplift the Lord versus people that hate him. Everything in life seems to be a conflict between God and Satan or God and non-belief or God and hostility toward God. You know, even to the point of where Russians would just put people to death, you know, back in, you know, children would kill their parents back in China. You know, it's, it's, it was all about that conflict. With that, I bid you shalom. I love you and praying for you, and I will see you next time.